I'm here with Minister Eamon Ryan. He is the Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources. It's Wednesday the 30th of September. We're two days away from voting, Minister. Um, I've been asking people for their comments and really basically on why we should vote yes. What benefit, if any, to Ireland will it be if there is a yes vote? And what happens if the majority vote no again? Well, firstly, a referendum is a personal decision. It's not party political, it's each citizen making their own vote, the collective response or a result of the one we all agreed to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm voting yes because I think actually this treaty makes the European Union more democratic. It actually allows it to do really important work in areas like energy and climate change, where I want to see it working. Um, and I think it's good for this country. I think it'll actually help us get out of the economic troubles we're in. We need to get a recovery going. I think by a yes vote on Saturday morning, uh, that'll start quicker, and I think it'll it'll be it'll be stronger. What are the benefits going to be of Ireland apart from yes, Europe will excuse the phrase like us more. I mean, are we going to see better broadband penetration? Are we going to see better facilities for waste reduction and all of that kind of thing? Are we going to see more jobs? I think we can see more jobs through, I mean, our model as a country has been to be an open trading country, often into the European Union. I'll take one example on the broadband front, which is mm -hmm. crucial to the economic development. I'll give an example of how the European Union actually helps us. I've been on the Telecoms Council, mm -hmm. um, and I've seen there the European Commissioner, backed up with the Council of Ministers, pushing mobile costs and broadband costs down saying that actually the bigger the companies have to actually reduce their prices. Now it's much easier and much better to do that at a European Union level, or certainly helps us nationally by doing that at a European Union level, because a lot of these companies are very powerful, they can move their investment one way or the other, by saying across Europe, sorry, this standard does not apply, we want higher speeds, lower costs. It makes it much easier, easier at a national level to actually deliver on that as well. So the European Commissioner for Communications, I worked very closely with her, really pushed within the Council of Ministers for us to get higher data speeds at lower cost. And that's an example where working collectively you can actually achieve a lot more. Okay, great. Uh, some of the questions from boards.ie members. Um, does no mean no? Is this going to be another spin of the wheel? I know you're sick of that question. Well, there was Sorry. a question asked earlier on whether there be Lisbon 3, and I don't think there will be. I right. think there can be. Um, why is there a second vote? Well, I suppose one of the things we did is went back and listened to what was the concerns in the first no vote. And a lot of research showed up what we think was clear enough at the time, that it was concern about us losing a commissioner, concern about us becoming part of a militarised Europe, we have to increase our defence spending, concern that our taxes would change or that we'd have to change a corporation tax, and concerns around abortion. Now, there are other concerns. There's other mm. bigger issues that people uh, are concerned about, and they're valid concerns. But in relation to those ones, when we asked what were the main concerns, they came up as the, in all the research as the main concerns that people had in relation to the first Lisbon Treaty. And I think we have addressed those. I mean, there is clear legal certainty now that our tax system will not change, that the European Union uh, does not have a role in Irish abortion policy, that uh, the neutrality issue and how we spend our own military money is purely a matter for the Irish government, not for the European Union to actually tell us what we have to do, and that there will be a single commissioner now for every country, which is a fundamental change from the first treaty. Mm -hmm. um, so for those reasons, I think it is possible for, for us to vote a second time, and ultimately, it's the Irish people decide. If the Irish people decide no, that is fine. We will have to deal with that and manage it. That will be the Irish people's choice. But I, there are a number of occasions in the past when we voted two, three, often three times on issues, on issues like divorce. Um, it didn't get through the first time. It was voted several times. I don't think it's infringement on Irish democratic rights to have the choice of voting a second time, or to have a choice in voting a second time, yes or no. Um. One of our members says, and I'll read this verbatim, bearing in mind the misinformation and dirty tricks, in his opinion, that have been put out by the no side, do you think that the referenda are a good idea or would a method of ratification similar to the other members of the EU be better? Refer I stand by a referendum process. I think actually public engagement, the fact that it is every citizen making up their own mind, is a really powerful addition to our democratic system. It's not easy to make a call sometimes, yes or no, and it's a very complex treaty. Like mm. this. There's hundreds of issues in it. It's very hard to sum and wrap all, all that up, but that's what we have to do. I mean, effectively, the Irish people, are being, are, because of our democratic system, are forced to make the overall assessment in the round 
taking the cards. Some articles I may not like. Some articles I don't like. Some ways that the European Union I don't agree with, I'd like to see changed. But in the round, taking everything into account, am I in favour of the development and the progression of the European Union as is broadly happening, or am I opposed to it? And it's on that basis that people have to make up their mind and vote yes or no. And I think regardless of how they make that call, to vote, because it is a stronger, more democratic uh, system when there is a large people, a number of people voting. What, what are your thoughts on the no campaign or the various, various campaigners for the no side? Take CORE, for example, who have been pushing strongly this minimum wage, the abortion, the euthanasia and the military, as, as well as the farming and whatever. Um, would, you, would you see that that is a, an element of the confusion that is out there and that will stop people from voting at all? Listen, they're entitled to their views. Yep. And I suppose there's a fundamental difference, I suppose. My perspective is we do have to engage in international cooperation to actually sh share power for, I think, for our greater good. I mean, we live in a globalised world. What I said earlier on about those telephone companies, you know, having operations in every single country in Europe, yeah. they don't. It's, it's, it's not just an Irish telephone company that we're actually dealing with. So therefore, you have to legislate for them, I believe, on a Europe-wide basis. Um, now, I think the core campaign, it seems to me, in reading their material or what they're saying, is they don't believe in such an international approach. They would actually like us to go back to a sovereignty being exclusively held and not sharing power. I don't agree with that fundamental approach, but they have their views and they're entitled to it. In terms of Declan Gandhi, when I'm reading, kind of looking at his arguments, it seems to me, going back to the very start of Libertas, mm -hmm. the first press releases, what they were actually saying, it's very much a pro-business approach. It's actually saying at its heart, leave the markets to decide, leave competition to actually work out how Europe develops, don't get bureaucratic responses. And I don't fundamentally disagree with that. I think actually the market system hasn't prevailed worked. I mean, I think it's right for political systems to actually interfere and to actually um, make up for the failings that markets do have. Uh, and again, he's entitled to his opinion. It's obviously one that's very strong, has very strong commercial backing, there's huge funding for huge postering campaigns. Um, but I don't agree with the fundamental premise, the fundamental analysis, uh, and I support a yes for it because I don't agree with it. Would you think that the Green Party's campaign has A, been honest and B, been effective? Certainly attempts to be honest and attempts to be effective, I think, whether we have or not, uh, we'll see. Um, this is the first time that we have been uh, on the yes side in a European treaty campaign. Uh, and for certain members, you know, they have different views. I mean, one third of our party, just under it, voted for us not to support the campaign. Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't think it should be personal. I think people are still entitled to their yes position and their no position. Uh, but uh, for me personally, it has been a positive experience. I've been out campaigning on the doors, I've been going to public meetings, and actually I think sometimes having to go out and explain why you're supporting this is a very useful exercise, a useful exercise of confirming your own mind what, what is it is exactly about the process that, that you think uh, is right or, or why, you, why you support it. And having to campaign are, uh, is actually, I think, a really positive way of, of getting a better understanding of yourself of what you're doing and why you want to. Europe to work in the way you want it to work. Um, is it difficult to, then to deal with the people who are not going to vote at all? I think that's the most important thing, regardless of one's view, yes or no, I, I would encourage people to get out and vote, because I think this democratic process is only strong when you have a strong mandate, when there's a large electorate voting on it, mm -hmm. and I think regardless of people's position, I would hope they would come out and vote on Friday. Brilliant. I'm going to end with this question, because I think it's a good one, uh, from one of our members who calls himself Project Mayhem. If a yes vote happens, where do you see Europe going in the next 10 to 20 years' time in a Lisbon-ratified sense versus a non-ratified sense? I don't see that it's going to have a fundamental change in the nature of the of development of Europe. I mean, it, it does, it makes uh, the decision-making, it, it changes the nature of decision-making somewhat, mm -hmm. but not fundamentally. It brings in new competences in areas that I'm happy to see it, in areas like energy. But it's not changing what the European Union has been doing in energy, it's just giving it legal effect. Um, and is that legal effect important? Yes, I think it is in terms of uh, it helps, it just helps copper fast with what you're actually doing. Uh, for me, uh, and maybe this, I'm influenced because I'm on the Council of Energy Ministers um, and because I'm very interested in the climate change issue, but I actually think the European Union, politics, all politics in the next 10 to 20 years, in my mind, is going to be about resources, okay. about protecting and sustaining resources. We are at resource limits. There's limits in water, limits in food, limits in climate, what it can bear, and limits in energy. 
Uh, I think the European Union is going to be focusing on, focusing on those resource issues over the next 10 to 20 years. And I think fundamentally you can only address them in a shared way. You mm -hmm. can't get energy security just by going back to your own shell as a country. You know, all our gas is important, all our oil is important, all our coal is important. Like We could pretend that we're not reliant on the rest of Europe. We could pretend that our security is safe if we act alone, but it's not. And I think the European Union recognises that, recognises that actually it is dependent on Russian gas and Middle East oil. And I think if I was to see what one significant development will happen in Europe in the next 10 years, it's an attempt to free ourselves from that insecurity, from that dependence, and to do our part in, in, in tackling climate change. The laws are set now for the next 10 years in that course. It's a matter of going out and actually applying them. Brilliant. Minister, thank you very much for your time. I know you have a busy day. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Hey, thanks indeed.